Howdy amigos, I'm the Mighty Orc, and in this video I'm going to give you four tips on how to increase the quality of your live stream, engage your current fan base, and win new fans, all without breaking the bank. So I got inspired to make this video when I had several musician friends of mine ask me what I do for my live stream, what I use, how I do it, etc. I'm not a live streaming expert. I've only been doing it for three months since the lockdown happened and all my gigs got canceled. I didn't have any income, so I had to sort of pivot and uh, rethink my whole performance strategy. That's sort of how I got into live streaming. But I've spent the last three months doing extensive research and also a lot of trial and error. So hopefully in this video, I can save you three months worth of heartache. <laughs> I also wanna mention, I'm gonna be talking about a lot of different products and I'm gonna list all of them below with links so you can kinda of check them out and see what you think. In addition, I'm gonna go over a few subjects broadly and I'll also include links to videos in the description that get in depth on each subject so that you can sort of pursue each one as you like. All right, with that in mind, let's dive in. Tip number one, the most important thing that you can do to improve the quality of your live stream is to have good audio. If you can't do anything else, this is gonna have a hugely positive impact. People will be forgiving with a so-so or even maybe poor quality video as long as the audio is good. So make sure your audio is good. How do you do that? Well, by using an external microphone. Now, if you're using your cell phone to live stream, there is a great little shotgun mic called the Rode Video Me. This little guy plugs right into your phone via the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. No cables, no batteries, anything like this, just plugs right in. If you don't have a 3.5 millimeter jack on your phone, you can probably just get an adapter, you know, an iPhone adapter, something like that if you're using an iPhone. The other option, if you want to take it a little bit further, is to get another Rode microphone, the Rode Video Micro. Now the Rode Video Micro is what I use it's what I'm using right now. It's what I use on all my live streams. It's a great little mic. And again, it plugs right into the 3.5 millimeter jack on your phone. Now, one additional thing that you're gonna need is a TRS to TRRS adapter cable if you're gonna plug that mic into your phone. And what that does is it shuts off the phone's internal microphone and takes the audio directly from the external mic. Another thing to keep in mind when you're using an external microphone is that you may want to mount it on something. And the Rode Video Micro has what's called a cold shoe mount. So you can uh, slide it onto like the top of a camera or if you have an adapter that has a cold shoe mount, it's gonna fit right in there. What I use, or what I like to use and have used in the past, is called the Stylus Z-Grip. I think that's what it's called. It is a cell phone holder that attaches to a tripod and has a cold shoe mount on top of it that you can slide a microphone into. Thus, you've got your cell phone attached to your tripod and your microphone attached to your cell phone all together in one neat little package. Now, if you're using your laptop to stream, you've got options there too. You can use a USB microphone. Blue Yeti makes a bunch of different microphones. I've never tried them because I don't use my laptop to stream, but I see them all over the place. In YouTube videos, everybody talks about them. I'm sure they're a really nice quality mic. And they have a microphone to sort of fit every budget. Now let's look at the price points on these microphones. So the Rode Video Me, you don't need anything else with it. It's gonna be about $60. That's a really good deal for a functional, portable shotgun microphone. The Rode Video Micro is also about $60, but you're going to need to purchase the TRS to TRRS adapter cable as well. That's around 
11 or 12 bucks. So the price goes up to about, you know, a little under $80 with tax, say. The Blue Yeti mics range in price from anywhere from, say, 50 or 60 bucks all the way up to three, four, five hundred dollars So you can really, there's a, there's a pretty large spread there, but you can find one for a reasonable price. And if you don't want to use Blue Yeti, you can use a less expensive one you can pick up for around 40 or 50 bucks. So there's audio. Let's go to tip number two. Tip number two, lighting. This is a way uh, to really spruce up the image that you're outputting on your live stream. So for 50 bucks, you can get what's called a soft box. What that is, you've seen them probably, uh, photographers using them, you know, on maybe movie sets or something like that, you know, photo shoots, things like this. It's a little box on a stand with a light bulb in it, and it has a sort of white translucent, probably, you know, plastic-ish sort of cover over it. And what that does is it directs soft light onto the subject of whatever you're filming. If you're doing a live stream, you know, maybe yourself or a product that you're promoting. It helps the video look more professional and it helps people see it better. Now what I do, and this is apparently very common practice lighting videos, is if you have two lights, you have what's known as the key light and that is your main light that's gonna be lighting your face. It's coming in at about 45 degrees this way, okay? And that's gonna light this side of your face. So if you can only afford to get one key light or one light, that's sort of where you should do it. Now, if you wanna get two lights, you'll have your key light here at about 45 degrees, off angle, off axis. And then, say, back here, maybe almost opposite the key light, you'll have what's called your fill light. And what the fill light does is it fills in the rest of the shadows that the key light creates on this side of your face. And it really, really helps just to highlight whatever the subject is of your video and also to create some depth in the shot and distinguish the subject from the background of the video. Create some depth and three dimensionality to the shot. It's very, very functional. Now let's take a look at my lighting rig and you can kind of get a sense of what I'm talking about. Mine is a little bit makeshift, um, but I think it sort of highlights the fact that you can really get sort of creative and make things work as best you can with what you have around you. Let's take a look. If you look to my left, you'll see this little sunflower umbrella and one of the lights. It's facing toward the umbrella away from me and it reflects the light back onto me so it's a little bit softer. That's my key light. Now when we go over here, we'll see my fill light. Now I set it up a little differently because of the spatial constraints. So, you know, you can just sort of do whatever works for you. But we have the fill light over here and that one I actually have pointing right at me. What I also have over that light is a white shower curtain liner. This softens the light and makes it a little less harsh on my face so there's not a whole lot of contrast between the light parts and the shadow. Let's take a look at a cell phone video with lighting and without so you can really sort of get a sense of the difference that lighting makes in your video. Here, let's check it out. Okay, y'all, so this is with every practical light on in the house that I could think of, plus the, you can see back here, the little uh, spotlight, whatever, you know. This doesn't look super pro, right? It looks a little, a little sloppy, a little choppy. Let's take a gander at what it looks like with the better lights on. All right, so you can tell it looks a little bit better, right? It's a little nicer. Uh, I'm just sort of looking around in the shot here. Yeah, it's definitely better. It's not great because my camera isn't the best, but I think with a uh, newer phone, you probably get a little bit nicer camera. This is a Galaxy S7, so it actually doesn't even take any of the microphones that I've been talking about, right? Uh, so, you know, it's just, it's not the best camera, but, but having nice lighting does improve the picture quality a little bit, and you can adjust the lights so, you know, it's maybe a little less orange. Okay, there you go. All right, so that's sort of what I do. Um, additionally, 
You may notice in the background here, I've got these cool little amber lights and sort of a blue mood lighting, right? So you can include backlights. And this, again, helps to sort of spice up the background a little bit and creates depth in the shot and adds a little color, which is really nice and fun. So that's sort of how I do lighting. Now, again, there are videos linked in the description below where you can really get more in-depth to it because there are ways to make stuff really, really look cool with just a couple of lights. Now, I'm certainly not an expert at it, so if you want to find out more about that, check the links in the description. Now, let's get to tip number three. Tip number three, framing the shot. This is where you can get really creative with what you want in the background and how you want the camera angled to sort of present a mood or feeling or particular object or subject in the shot itself. I've noticed that a lot of people will set up in front of a wall and maybe put up a fun background, a blanket, a beautiful piece of fabric, something along those lines. And that's a really cool idea, you know. This is really something that's going to allow you to sort of get creative with, with how you do the shot and, and really make it personal and and uh, interesting. What I like to do is use leading lines in the shot. Leading lines are naturally occurring lines in whatever shot you're, you're taking that direct the viewer's eye to the subject of the shot. Now let's take a look at my live stream show from last week, okay? If you look to your left, you'll see the guitar case there. Now the guitar case is creating a line that leads to the subject of the shot, which is me performing. And then if you look to the right, you'll see the bookcase, which again creates a line leading to me again. This really makes it easy for the viewer to know where to look. I know that sounds kind of strange or silly, like how would you not know where to look? But if you can make it easier for your viewers to just know right where to look, it just guides them right in, you know, leads them right to the subject, it's gonna at least unconsciously make for a much more pleasant viewing experience, I think. And it's a cool thing to experiment with. You know, it's just one of these sort of very artistic things that, you know, you can get wild with and experiment with. All right, now let's get to tip number four. Tip number four is about cameras and about image quality. Okay, so say you're using your cell phone to film this stuff and you want to improve the image quality a little bit. You want to add a little bit of definition, a little uh, more zazz. The first thing that I think of in this regard is clip-on lenses. So you've got those, you know what I'm talking about? Those little lenses that you can get off Amazon that clip right onto your phone. Dude, those look so cool. Now I haven't tried them, but they look really cool. And they're really, really inexpensive for the potential quality that you're going to get. For example, when you're doing a shot on your cell phone, chances are if you get the camera close enough for the audio to be the kind of quality that you want, it may be that the camera is too close and it doesn't capture a wide enough field of view. Maybe you playing your instrument or you know, a product that you're trying to promote, whatever it may be. So you can get one of these little clip-on lenses that's a wide angle, clip it on your phone, and all of a sudden you've got a wider shot that's gonna allow people to see more of what you're doing, be more demonstrative, and therefore more engaging. So that's the first thing I would recommend. You can get those for anywhere from like, you know, starting at probably around $10. And then they go up in price. They've even got like telephoto lenses and stuff. It's unbelievable. You can probably also put one of those on your webcam on your computer. Now speaking of computer webcams, you can upgrade your internal camera to something a little nicer and again, increase the quality of the image you're outputting. I really like the Logitech C920. This camera's been around for quite some time. It's very effective, it's tried and true, it's very reasonably priced, and you know somewhere under $100. And they work great. So if you were using your laptop or your desktop computer to stream, you get you a Logitech camera and a USB microphone, and man, you're really kind of sitting pretty. Now the camera that I use for live streaming is called the GoPro Hero 8. Here's where we start to get into the higher end stuff. Now the GoPro isn't a super expensive DSLR camera or anything like that, but it's a really great action camera that has a lot of features that are gonna be useful when you live stream. First of all, it has an app 
that you can download to your phone and control the camera. For those of you that may not be familiar with GoPros, they're tiny, tiny little cameras. And the screen on the back where you can look at the image that you're capturing is even tinier. So it's, it's sort of tricky to see. The app really allows you to see very well what image you're capturing, the light quality, plus you can make all the adjustments to the menus, preferences, angles, etc., etc., all right there on your phone while you're looking at the image. It's really, really functional. Now, here's something about the GoPro. In order for you to use an external mic with the GoPro, which you're going to want to do, you have to get some extra equipment. Now, the GoPro itself goes for anywhere from about $370 to $400. This is the GoPro Hero 8. Now, in addition to purchasing the camera, if you want to plug in an external microphone or run an HDMI out from the camera, you're going to need to purchase the GoPro Media Mod. Now, that ranges from about $80 to around $150, depending on its availability. You know, I've seen it for a wide variety of prices. The MIDI mod, as I said, comes with a 3.5 millimeter input jack for your microphone, a, I think it's a mini HDMI out, and two cold shoe mounts, as well as a built-in shotgun microphone. Now, I've heard good things about it, but I've never tried it. What I use instead is a case for the GoPro called the Ulanzi G85. This is a very durable, all aluminum case that has two cold shoe mounts and a place for the other piece of equipment that you're going to need, the GoPro adapter. The GoPro adapter allows you to plug in an external microphone to your camera. You plug the mic into the adapter and you plug the adapter into the camera. Additionally, you can run the camera from wall power with this adapter as well. It's got a USB-C in where you can charge the battery, where you can run the phone off of wall power while you're live streaming, say, so you don't run out of juice and end your live stream earlier inadvertently. Now again, the GoPro is about $400. The Ulanzi case is about 40 or 50. The adapter is about 60 bucks. And again, the microphone, whatever microphone you use, I'm using the Rode Video Micro, is about $60. So you're looking at a not insignificant investment to really get the camera and the mic stuff going. With that in mind, the GoPro is a great live streaming camera. In the app, you have the option to set up your live stream to Facebook or YouTube, and it makes it super easy to do. And honestly, that's how I've been able to do it, because if it was too complicated, I probably couldn't make it happen. So that's really what I like. That's what I recommend. And uh, let's just take a look. I'll just show you what it looks like. So this is the rig. You know, you see the tripod, the mic, the camera. And again, you see my lighting set up. And it's pretty simple, but very effective. Now, if you really want to get sort of fancy and take your live stream to the next level, particularly with uh, a nicer camera, I would recommend the Sony a6000. Sony makes really good cameras for live streaming. They have clean HDMI outs and really nice picture. You know, this is an interchangeable lens camera. So it's something that's really functional and will work very well. In addition to having a good camera, however, you're also going to need to start using uh, software, something like OBS, Open Broadcasting Studio, to allow you to take your signal and send it places. So it's not as simple as just going into an app on your phone and boom, you're on Facebook streaming live. All right, y'all. So those are the tips. Audio, lighting, framing, and quality cameras. These are going to have a big, big impact on the quality of your live stream. I would say the main takeaway is if you can only afford to do one of these things, have it be the audio. Get a little Rode Video Me or a Rode Video Micro and plug that into your phone or to your computer. Uh, it's going to make a hugely positive impact on the quality of the audio in your live stream and that in turn is going to keep people engaged and keep them coming back. So that's the scoop, y'all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it helpful, leave me a comment, give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel. Be sure to click the notification bell so you know when I upload new stuff. You can follow me on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, wherever, <laughs> you know. And uh, 
Also, be sure and join me for my live stream. You can kind of see all of these tips in action. My live stream is called the Stay at Home Sessions, and I do it every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Time on Facebook Live. I've put a link to that down in the description so you can go check it out and look at maybe some past live streams and see what you think. So, all right. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. Take good care, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Howdy, amigos. I'm the Mighty Orc, and in this video, I'm going to show four... I'm going to give four tips. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> this video is geared primarily toward beginners, musicians, business people.